So what I'd like to be able to do is that, is that uh, presumably the, the, uh, the, the login page would have to go out to some database, right, some server in a remote, uh, hosted in a remote server, uh, pass in the username and password, right? And that uh, server would then do a database lookup, see if the user actually exists, right? And then come back saying, yep, that user does exist, right? Perhaps giving us the, even the ID of the user who uh, it wants to log in, yes? Uh, now, the data access typically, um, like, like we did in, uh, in React, uh, the, the, that data access typically would have to be encapsulated by a service layer, right? Uh, presumably, it's an exposed uh, RESTful service from the middle tier, Right, which we did, we imp we've implemented it in, in previous assignments, uh, and we want to access it from 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 Angular. Yes, right. So, so from from Angular, just like we did for in the React side, any data access layer, any any, any access to data should be through an, an encapsulated, dedicated class that that ha that holds uh, the access to that data, and it's not going to be any different uh, in Angular. Right. So we're going to have a dedicated uh, service here. Uh, implemented with a class by a class called user service, user service, right? Uh, and in, in user service, we will have all the finders, all the create, all the updates, all the, all the deletes, just like we did, just like all the services we've implemented so far, right? Right now, we're gonna we're gonna uh, implement it. We're, we're gonna create a simple version of this because we don't have we don't actually have a service. Uh, so instead, we're gonna hard code the content for now, okay? Uh, so, so we are going to implement the user service. Notice that we are annotating it as injectable, right? Meaning that this this is this this will be able to be uh, will 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 be able to be injected as an inversion of control, right? As a, as part of a constructor, somebody's constructor, right? Uh, it needs to be annotated. Actually, I think you can do it even when it's not annotated. Uh, but it also needs to be. It needs to be declared in the app.modules. It needs to be declared in the app.modules, right, as a service provider, right, as, as some, something that needs to be, the life cycle of this object needs to be managed by the infrastructure. Uh, and, and, then, and then a singleton instance will be available all throughout the application. Yes? Right, so we do that by declaring the user service inside of the app.modules as a user service. And now the constructor in the, the logging component can now ask for that service, right? In the constructor, it will be injected. Notice the data type user service, right? And locally, it, it, will, it will be uh, passed into a local variable called user service. And now we can use this dot user service to access whatever whatever data is in the user service. Make sense? Uh, this again, this is a best practice uh, where all the data access is is uh, encapsulated in a reusable component. Right, in this case, the user service, which can be used by multiple uh, components. Right? The profile is going to have to use the user service. The register is going to need to use this user service. The login is going to have to use this user service. Right? So instead of each one fetching their own little data, right, it's much better practice to encapsulate that in one single place. Yes? Okay. So yeah, so user service, for now, is just going to host some static content. Right? Ideally, this would you know, be doing a fetch, going out to a server, and fetching the data. For now, it'll just uh, host some static content with some static uh, users, Alice and Bob, right, with uh, their usernames and passwords and their IDs. Notice that I'm using underscore ID instead of ID. Uh, only this is, this is because I'm looking forward to uh, implementing this in MongoDB later. And MongoDB's unique identifiers are underscore ID as opposed to just ID. Right, so this is kind of looking forward to implementation in Mongo. Uh, right, so there's users, and uh, and and then inside uh, we we can um, we can implement a function that can just iterate and see if I can find the person by using them in password. Right, so for instance, uh, here's find by credentials, which we're passing it uh, your your username and password, and it's just iterating over this array to see if I find the user that has this particular username and password. Ideally, this would be going out to a server, right, with a fetch, coming back, rest, you know, re response.json, right, uh, and then using a promise. Let's 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 do this a little later. Uh, so this one will return if it finds a user, it returns a user object. If not, it'll return null. Okay. All right. So now that I have a service from the login component, uh, it's pretty simple, right? We can. Uh, uh, why is this like that?
Oh wow. What? There's my my aunt in it, and uh, and the login now is is trying to retrieve the user using the find user by credential, passing the user and password, uh, and uh, and here it says I'm going to navigate to user comma user ID. And I notice that it's, it's going to concatenate user and uh, and the ID and make one path, right? and then it's going to navigate there. Uh, so this is an example of using an array right to build up the the the, the path. We could have concatenated. Just with regular string concatenation, right? But this is, this is more kosher, right? Also, notice that I'm not checking to see if user is null or not. So typically, there would be some validation of whether the user actually exists. I haven't done that, right? But typically, you would have to you know, validate does the user even exist. Also, if this were using a RESTful service, this would be uh, embedded inside of a then clause, right? We say you would, you would, there would be a promise here, right? It would be asynchronous. Right? You can go out to the server. Right, you get a promise. Dot then check to see if it exists, and then you navigate. Right, all nested inside of a promise. We'll do that a little later. Uh, for um, uh, um, here we have a. Uh, oh, okay. So 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 now that we've navigated to the profile page, well, now we navigate to the profile page. The profile is page blank. Right, there's nothing there to show. Right, typically, what the profile page would do is ask, okay, well, whose profile page, whose profile am I looking at? Right, and that information is encoded in the URL. The URL tells me the ID of the person that I'm logged in. Right, or uh, this would be an ID that would be stored in the session in the server. Right, um, uh, so it depends on how you implement it. Right, whether you're navigating to a profile page if you know the ID already of the person. And then uh, you can use this technique, or you would have to use session IDs, right? Uh, here, uh, we are passing. Right. <laughs> uh, my, I, I do karate with my son, and um, I used to be able to beat him up. <laughs> he's now 13, and he's taller than me, uh, which is not so hard, but. Uh, but it's also very uh, much stronger. You know, I remember when I used to be able to tickle him and um, overpower him. No, not anymore. Now when I when I tickle him, he just just holds you know, and says, "Daddy, daddy, I don't want, I don't want to hurt you." <laughs> <laughs> so so he he does a passive. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah. Anyway. Uh, right. So so we're passing information about the currently logged in <coughs> user. As part of the ID of the profile that we're just navigating to, yes. So the profile needs to be able to say, "Oh, whose profile do you want to see?" And that's encoded in the URL. We need to be able to read the URL, that URL, look at the ID, and go fetch the user with, with that ID, so we can display the profile for that particular profile. So to do that, uh, we're going to use another service, right? There's a, there's a service that allows you to read that information from the URL. Uh, it's called the activated route. The route right that is currently being displayed, right, and I, I like to be able to interact with the current route that is being displayed in the in the URL. Uh, so we can inject the uh, activated route uh, in the constructor, right, and then we can we can uh, then use it as a local variable. This dot activated route, I can so I can read the URL, right. So that's done at the constructor level, and then in the on uh, on init. Right in the ng in it, right ng on in it, meaning you're ready to be rendered. Right, you're, you're ready to be rendered. What do you want to do when you're when you want to re-render? Well, I like to know, you know, I like to know who I whose ID do I need to load, right? Uh, so on 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 in it, what we can do is is uh, this that activator routes give me from that routes if you have path parameters, give me all those parameters. Right in this particular case. Uh, we have the user IDs as a parameter, and uh, and and um, now interacting with that route, it's a it's a it's an asynchronous notification. It's an asynchronous communication with that URL. Uh, so basically, we're we're generating a subscribe, meaning once you once those parameters have been parsed, notify me. Right, I am subscribing to changes in that in that path. I will be notified 
when those changes when those changes occur. So notify me when when the paths uh, change. So we're subscribing dot subscribe, and that in that subscribe, right? In that subscribe, we're asking, uh, okay, the path changed. Tell me what the parameters are. Right. So so here we have a a function. Uh, that uh, is going to be called when they, whenever the parameters change, and they pass us the all uh, a map, a map of all the parameters, and and then we can read from the from the map the uh, the, I, the 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 name that we gave it when we declared it in the routes. Or we gave it a name. Or we can retrieve the user ID, and then locally we have this that user ID. Now this user ID typically we can use to to load the the information for that particular user. Uh, we can go out and fetch it from the from the database, from the RESTful service, uh, or in this case, we're just going to go out to the user service. We can use the user service. We're going to use the ID. We we'll say, well, retrieve for me the user whose ID is user ID. Right. So we're going to have the um, um, oh, we we can also uh, not only can we subscribe, we can also unsubscribe. Right? Otherwise, if we subscribe, this component would be notified of every single change in the pa in the path. Right? Even if it doesn't if it doesn't match it, it match it, it will be notified of of, uh, of of anything. Right? So so we can also implement the undestroy, meaning when it gets unloaded, when the component gets unloaded, we can unsubscribe. Right? We can unsubscribe and say I'm no, I don't I no longer want to be notified of any changes in the path. Right? Um, so anyway, uh, back in the uh, in the client, we can implement find user by ID, which takes the ID and then iterates uh, looking for that ID. If it finds that ID, then it returns that particular user, which we can then use in the profile. In the profile, we can have we can ask for the user ID with the, for the user service to be injected, right? Uh, and then once it's injected in the in the um, uh, in the constructor, in the on uh, on the init, uh, we can uh, we can use the user ID that we loaded from the parameters to fetch that particular user uh, from the user uh, find user by ID find user by ID uh, and then and then assign it to a local variable use this dot user. Uh, once we declare the, the, this dot user as an object, uh, we can we can then render it. Oh, here, here we've uh, declared um, we've declared user. Notice we declared it as an object. We declare it as an object, but because we have now a much more powerful language like TypeScript, right? Now we have we can be strongly typed, right? As opposed to just using strings and primitive data types, we can declare our own classes. We can say, in just uh, instead of declaring as a as a generic object, we can declare our own class. We can say uh, our ID, our password. Right, you know, just like just like uh, any any serious language, right? We, where we ha we we have local variables. These are all private variables by 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 uh, uh, by default. And then we have a constructor that can initialize all the values for username, password, first name, and last name. And we can redeclare a user. And we can redeclare the um. Oh, okay. So here here we are we are uh, in our in our service. Uh, instead of declaring users as just some some just an array of of, uh, of just plain old objects, uh, we are declaring as an array of user instances where we're instantiating several users uh, from uh, from values uh, and and using this this the the, um, the schema of the uh, the user class that we're declaring here, right? Uh, so now your our user service service instead of having that hard coded uh, list of users. Now we've moved the uh, that list of users into a mock uh, file that we can then load and um, and then initialize our array of users. Uh, so here's our profile. Our profile is that um, uh, we loaded the user object and we just display the first name and last name of that particular user. And presumably we would like to be able to navigate uh, to some some details of, of uh, for that particular for that particular user. Okay.